Last spring, we first told you about allegations involving Fremont's Dodge County Humane Society, including animal neglect. Now, City Council has approved a contract with a new shelter, but nothing's changed with the longtime contract with DCHS. Our 3 News Now investigative team took a look at how much Fremont is now spending on animal control. Since the spring, many in Fremont have complained about the Dodge County Humane Society, saying the city needs to end its contract with the nonprofit and get a new director. I believe that the animals need a voice. I 100% don't think she needs to be in the position she's in. She doesn't need to run that shelter. We talked to Amanda Comstock and Jessica Mace last spring. They're just two of several former employees who say something needs to change. A lot of our cats were infected with tapeworm or ringworm. Um, animals weren't getting vaccinated, weren't getting spayed or neutered, weren't getting microchipped. After about nine months of calls for change, the city council did something about it in late January. They gave a sheltering contract to a different shelter in Fremont called Forever Home, but they still have their contract with DCHS. <laughs> and that translates to $103,000 a year for DCHS and another $190,000 to Forever Home. I know it's a lot of money, but I'm partially excited to see this city go from treating animal control services somewhat as a necessary evil into putting a lot of money into this to get to a point where we can find something that works. Deb Newell started Forever Home in 2016. She says the controversy around DCHS has directly impacted her facility. When we had kennels open and we could have taken in animals um, either nationwide or across the state from other shelters, we purposely left those kennels open just in case there was a large demand for us to hold lost and found animals related to what was going on in the community last year. Even though we've given the contract for Forever Home and they may well be the first call, um, as long as we're still paying someone else for those services, if they're not performing those services, fiscal responsibility would say we should not be paying and we should terminate the agreement. City Council Member Brad Yerger says he's already moved to remove DCHS's contract twice. And I think the public is a little distressed over the fact that that hasn't occurred and didn't occur when we voted in a new contract. We called DCHS on Tuesday to request an interview and ask what the future of the shelter might be. They told us their legal counsel would give us a call, which we're still waiting for. But Director Tamar Reed did speak at a city council meeting in late December, saying the animal control board that found possible violations of the contract was biased, and she and her staff have faced continued harassment. Here's what she told us back in May. People ask me, why do I still do this? Because I am here for the animals. You keep telling me that I don't care about animals. You keep telling me that I don't have a heart. I'm here for them, and I'm here for my staff. There's fear in the community, and that doesn't shed good light on the city of Fremont. Susan Jacobus was city council president, but lost her November election. She has been a vocal critic of DCHS and says distrust towards the shelter has been around long before last spring. And unfortunately, I was part of the council that helped kick that can down the road, and we failed to address it until it got out of hand. And to me, this situation got out of hand. And shame on us, myself included, for not having pushed harder to rectify the situation. And on top of the nearly $300,000 the city will pay each year, the city will also pay Forever Home hourly for services like picking up stray pets. The city is also buying equipment and hiring two community service officers. You can see the breakdown of all the costs and more details on our website, 3newsnow.com, as well as the original stories we shared with you last year on this.